Well, look, welcome to Marrickville, and I want to thank uh, very much Pallion for having us here today. This is the largest employer in Marrickville, some 250 people at more than 20 sites. And what we see behind us here is the Melbourne Cup and the Norman Brooks Trophy for the Australian Open that are produced right here in Marrickville. What people mightn't know is that Australia is the, uh, the fifth largest export in Australia is gold. We are the largest gold producer in the world. And what we do here is see that raw product, that raw material, value added with highly skilled artisans and important processes for smart manufacturing. What this does here is show that Australia can compete and beat the rest of the world if we're smart. If we do it smarter, do it faster, do it better. And that's what they do right here. The best product in the world and some over 90% of jewellery made in Australia will come or have some connection with here. So here, a great employer a great producer of value add for the Australian economy. And what I did on Saturday with our Made in Australia campaign uh, was launch a 10 point plan as a part of our future Made in Australia. What I want to see is Australia continue to export our resources, but wherever possible to value add before we export those resources. To value add, creating jobs and value right here in Australia. And this business shows exactly what is possible, shows the benefit for the national economy. Now, Australia governments, Australian governments, state and territory, along with our national government, uh, purchased about $200 billion in goods and services last year. As we come out of the pandemic, we have to recognise that Australia showed how strong our society was over the last couple of years. People making sacrifices, people looking after their neighbours, people getting vaccinated. Here in this company, they had a financial incentive for their employees to get vaccinated and 98% are already fully vaccinated with double doses, the uh, employees here. It shows that it can work. But it also showed some of the weaknesses in our economy. The fact that we're not resilient enough. We don't make enough things here in Australia. Here, this high value manufacturing centre is making an enormous difference to a local economy, but it's making a difference for the nation as well. And it's been my great honour and privilege uh, to be here today and to uh, go through just some of, just some of what they produce right here. Happy to take questions. Sounds like the PM may go to Glasgow and it sounds like the government is likely to commit to net zero. If these things do happen, will you be satisfied with the government's performance on climate change? <laughs> Not at all. Before the last time there was a change of government in 2007, at the very last minute, John Howard said that he'd ratify the Kyoto Protocol and he said that we'd have an emissions trading scheme. They were bipartisan positions that went to the election in 2007 and guess what happened? Straight afterwards, we saw a further descent into the destructive behaviour that we've seen since 2013. This government have had eight years to take action on climate change. Uh, we now know the embarrassing situation uh, of Australia being a pariah the last time we were at a national conference uh, in terms of a global conference in Europe last year. Uh, we know also that when Boris Johnson convened a conference. He didn't bother to invite Australia because Australia had nothing to say. Uh, we also know that the last time when the Biden administration convened a conference just months ago, Australia ranked about 26 when it came uh, to speakers, uh, some way after Brunei. Uh, we are a significant national economy. Uh, we are a G20 nation. We are one of the highest per capita emitters in the world and we have a government that's in, it involved itself in, quite frankly, absurd and ridiculous rhetoric, cheered on by some in the media. Uh, when you have a statement like uh, the use of electric vehicles would end the weekend, which the Prime Minister 
and Minister Cash said during the last campaign, then this isn't a government that respects technology. Uh, today, uh, in a couple of hours, I'll be meeting with uh, Andrew Forrest about his initiatives that he's doing with hydrogen. Uh, he announced a hydrogen uh, plant uh, to assist manufacturing in Port Kembla. Uh, the minister, Minister Taylor, came out and said it was a gas-fired plant. It's not. It's about green hydrogen. Uh, this government can't even in the dealings that they have with the business community that are so far ahead of the government. What we have is the Business Council of Australia being ahead, the National Farmers Federation being ahead, uh, people in civil society all being ahead of this government and a government that isn't leading is always following. And the absurdity of the government just weeks before the Glasgow Climate Conference having internal negotiations as, it's, as if this was about dealing over committee positions in, on some committee in the parliament. This is about the future of our economy, it's about the future of our planet and the Prime Minister can't even say whether he'll turn up. Well, he's been absent from the debate seriously on climate change up to this point. It would be absurd if he was absent from presence at Glasgow. And on the revelations out of IGA, um I'll come to that for climate. That's it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, did you know before yesterday that Anthony Byrne was involved in branch stacking and paying for memberships? No. Well, what do you say about that? He says that it's endemic. It's been, these practices have been endemic in the party since the 1990s. What do you say to that? Is that true? Uh, I'm not a member of the Victorian branch, uh, nor do I have uh, detailed knowledge of, uh, of the whole electorate, and you'd be surprised if I did. Uh, no, si since, I've been, since I've been the leader of the Labor Party, let's be very clear about the actions that I've taken. One of the first actions I took within three weeks was to expel John Setka from the Labor Party. Uh, once the revelations were, were uh, given on uh, Channel 9 and 60 Minutes, Myself and Daniel Andrews supported uh, intervention into the Victorian branch, which essentially took over the Victorian branch and we appointed uh, Steve Brax and Jenny Macklin as the administrators of the branch. I did that within 48 hours. Are you going to ask for him to step down? Uh, look, it's not appropriate for me to comment on the specifics while IBAX procedures are taking place. They are, le that they are legal processes and it's important that they be allowed to take their course. What I did, what I did was intervene strongly, immediately, decisively, intervene into the Victorian branch so that uh, any branch stacking or any manipulation of the rules couldn't achieve any advantage of anyone. And I note, I note that uh, the national executive was taken to court as a result of that national executive intervention. But we took over the pre-selections, federal and state. We took over the administration of the branch. That was decisive action. That was leadership that I showed and Daniel Andrews showed. No, you, said, you, said you, didn't know, you said you didn't know about these until yesterday, but what is your reaction now that you have heard these, these revelations? Well, I, I didn't follow, I must say, the, uh, ev every word that was done there, but clearly if there are any improper practices, are improper. And that's why I intervened and dismissed the branch. That was the most significant intervention into the Victorian branch of the Labor Party since 1971. And since I've been leader of the Labor Party, we have had significant interventions to restructure the New South Wales branch of the Labor Party and the Victorian branch of the Labor Party. You've now got someone who has admitted to branch staff. Do you think it's appropriate that he stays in his role? Look, we, we will allow the IBAC processes to take their course. It's not appropriate to preempt uh, their findings and those processes. Uh, that's uh, very clear when you have uh, legal matters taking place. Uh, we've intervened uh, to make sure that no one can gain any advantage from any improper practices. That's why we did that. Will you ask for Anthony Burns' resignation? I, I've, I've already made that, uh, that uh, I've already answered that. Jason Clare says that it's uh, unrealistic to think that this doesn't happen at a federal level as well. How widespread is this? Uh, well, there's a bit of branch stacking goes on in the Liberal Party. 
there's a bit of branch stacking goes on, there's all sorts of uh, funding issues, and I compare the response of myself and Daniel Andrews uh, to intervene into the branch with the sort of responses that we've seen uh, from the Liberal Party. Uh, the Liberal Party, of course, had major branch stacking in the Wentworth electorate uh, quite uh, famously uh, just a few years ago, a significant influx of new members. The Liberal Party have pre-selections at the moment just next door here in Reid, where the sitting member is being challenged as a result of uh, an internal conflict and battle, some matters of which are before the Independent Commission Against Corruption at the moment, uh, with uh, the former uh, Minister John Sadoti at the centre of that, but the local federal member being under challenge. Uh, Stuart Robert has an interesting career in terms of uh, all sorts of involvement uh, in Queensland. Uh, we've seen all sorts of uh, involvement uh, from time to time uh, in political parties. Uh, it should be stamped out. What's important is whether you have a preparedness to take action I took action. It was swift. It was decisive. But if I know this candidate for Higgins, Michelle and Nada Raja, indirectly blamed the PM for a suicide that she didn't know the full details of. Do you support her remaining a candidate for the party? Look, we, we've had, in terms of uh, these issues, I, 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 do, uh, I do point out that there was a, a, a Royal Commission into uh, issues relating to home insulation, whereby a number of members of the coalition made extraordinary statements about, uh, about Kevin Rudd. Um, Michelle Ananda Raja has apologised uh, for the tweet that she made. It's appropriate that she make that apology. And she did so. And she did so. And she did so. She's apologised. And, uh, and uh, that is more than, I must say, uh, coalition mem members who say all sorts of extraordinary things about members of the Labor Party and never apologise. Michelle has apologised. That's appropriate. She has your support? Yes, she's a, she's a candidate in the election. Uh, she apologised. It was wrong what she did and she was right to apologise. Are you able to guarantee that no other federal Labor MPs have engaged in branch stacking activities? Well, you know, I can guarantee uh, that the Liberal Party has a range of members who have been involved in branch stacking uh, in terms of, of pre-selections. Uh, what I can guarantee is that in the Victorian branch uh, we have had an, an assurance by intervening that no one, no one can gain any advantage from any branch stacking activity in Victoria. That's why, we, that's why we intervened. But what about federal Labor? Well, what, what's federal Labor? Well, the question was, can you guarantee what, that there is no... Where? Labor. What's the allegation? Any, if, any, if, any the, if there's an allegation, Labor. if there's an allegation, it should be made. Um, but if you're asking, there, there is no federal Labor in terms of there are state branches of the Labor Party as a structure. They run the pre-selections with the exception of Victoria, uh, where we intervened to make sure that the National Executive took control of those pre-selections. That was taken to court. Uh, we've been successful. Given your intervention, though, after the 60 Minutes revelations, and you said you know, quite strongly that you acted within 48 hours to make a change, we've had these admissions yesterday from F.C. Burns at IMAC, so there's no contestation about whether or not that's true. They, they, Why don't you make that same intervention here? We have intervened. We have intervened. Into, will you, will you... We have intervened into the Victorian branch. The revelations that are made in the media are very different before uh, revelations before a quasi-judicial body, or in this case a judicial body, in Victoria. It's a, it's a legal process that has, uh, has taken case. This is evidence before the legal processes. And just like uh, the Premier of New South Wales will appear before the Independent Commission Against Corruption. Let me just say this. I will stamp out corruption wherever I see it. I'm the leader of a political party who wants a serious national anti-corruption commission. There's only two leaders, two alternative, there's a prime minister and an alternative prime minister in this country. Only one of us wants a serious national anti-corruption commission. Only one of us has been prepared to intervene into branches 
of their own political party in order to stamp out corruption. I'm that leader. And that's why I want a serious National Anti-Corruption Commission uh, which will be able to hold public hearings, which will be able to make its own inquiries. Scott Morrison opposes these very processes that have led to the revelations that took place yesterday, like he has been critical of the ICAC for its hearings. And since, Last one. Since Premier Blatter's ridiculous designation, some Liberal MPs have, have called it out and said that there maybe needs to be an overhaul or a review of the current ICAC model that we have in New South Wales. What do you think about that? Well, that says it all about the fact that while hearings are going on, you have the Liberal Party response is to undermine the judicial organisations that are there to stamp out corruption. Uh, if you had an equivalence, what you'd have is people in the Labor Party being critical of the IBAC processes. I'm not critical of the IBAC processes. I support them. I support them. I support stamping out corruption wherever it's found, and I stand by my record in taking swift, decisive action wherever it's found. Thanks very much.